I want to take you through diagnosing some of the more common corrupt package errors that I've seen. Now these are, for those of you that are experienced with SSIS, these are those head scratching moments where you just kind of have to sit down and figure out, okay, I know it's not corrupt, but why am I getting this? Is it this, this, or this? This is one of these reasons, I know that. But imagine you're somebody brand new coming into SSIS, which may not be that difficult for some of you to imagine, and you get some error message that says, ah, this package may be corrupt. You know, you're getting pretty worried immediately when you're working with SSIS. So what I want to talk to you about in this video is how to create your own package corruption scenarios and then in turn how to troubleshoot them. Now, you may be thinking, well, why would I want to know how to make corrupt packages? Well, if you know how to do it, then that demystifies what that error message means, and it allows you to quickly just go through a mental checklist. Well, why am I getting that? It's Well, it's, it's either this, this, or this. It's, it's easy. i just got to figure it out. So it's not going to be difficult. I will need to set up a scenario, though. So here's what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to attach this to the video um, I'm going to create a solution and I'm going to add a couple of packages to the solution that are either going to cause errors or they won't depending on what we do with the package and how we open them um, the scenario is easily replicatable by you so if you really want this and you want to get good at SSIS what I'm doing is so simple you should do it yourself Okay, so I could have made it really easy and I can attach it. And I'm telling you up front, I'm not doing it because it's so easy. Uh, so here we go. Let me create a new project. And it'll be an integration services project. And it will be a corruption. And so we'll have a corrupt packages project here. Does it matter what I'm typing in there to you? No. You want to follow along at home and name them pink and fluffy it won't make any difference to what happens here focus on what matters not little bitty things like the name of the solution here that's not going to matter at all here okay so here's what we're going to do what I want to focus on is when we save a package go ahead and hit my properties window here F4 but you couldn't see me hitting F4 when we save a package sorry, back over here and we're going to focus on the corruption errors you will get depending on which protection level that you have chosen okay so if uh, one word for those of you that are watching this video without having previously watched the other videos in this chapter I might be going a little fast for you because this might be new information well what is encrypt all versus encrypt sensitive what is sensitive data I, ah, We've covered all of that. It might be helpful for you to go back and watch those videos, either before continuing or after this video to get more comfortable. So let's do a don't save sensitive. Um, and that's actually going to be the name of my package, don't save sensitive. And what we're going to do for this package and for all packages is we're going to just simply add an execute SQL task and we're going to then make a connection and we're going to connect to the master database of our local server and all we're going to do is we're going to run a select all from sys.databases and that's all I'm going to do. And if I run this right now, then we should get green because it's able to make a connection to SQL Server and it's able to run that particular query. Okay. Now, the one thing that I'm going to change in this before I continue is under the properties of the connection, I'm going to actually put in the username and password here. So what I actually set up here was I set it up to use Windows authentication. I want to use SQL Server authentication. So I'm actually going to put in the SQL Server password. 
I'm going to tell it to save my password. Now wait a minute. Okay. Save. Go to the package properties, F4. Don't save sensitive. Passwords are sensitive. Okay. Hmm, interesting. So I execute this and it runs and uh, we get an error message here. Um, failure. Warning code. Failed to acquire connection. Connection may not be configured correctly. Okay, let's move this over so we can see it. Or you may not have the permissions on this connection. Well, now wait a minute. Let's come back over here. Double click on it. Um, go Rather, our connection here. Test that connection. Uh, the login failed. Oh, that's because we got to put our password in here. Let's put our password in. Make sure we save. Succeeded. Okay, so okay. F5 to run the package and uh, okay you see what's happening oops I keep doing that what's happening is it's not saving the sensitive data right remember that okay so we test the connection is going to fail okay now let's do the exact same thing make a new package uh, F4 to bring this up the protection level encrypt sensitive with user key Let's rename the package object. And same exact thing, we'll execute SQL, make ourselves a new connection. Uh, we will use now, I'm just going to redo the whole thing. SA, save the password, master, select all from sys.databases. Okay. Execute the package. We get green this time, okay, because it is saving the sensitive information and it's saving it in an encrypted format. Okay, so we're saving the sensitive information. Now uh, let's do, and probably one or two more packages will suffice here. Uh, now let's do encrypt sensitive with password. Okay. And, oops tried to copy that so that I would and we'll give it a super secret password and we'll rename the package object and yada 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 the exact same thing right execute SQL and we'll use that and Run this one. Yay. Very good. Okay. I think that's good enough. Well, I think we can just start with these three. Now, we could do encrypt all with user key and encrypt all with password. Not going to make a difference for the corrupt package errors. Okay. Now, if you want to follow along at home, what you're going to need to do next is I'm going to move these this particular project to the root of my C drive without telling you why and then what you'll need to do at home is you will need to create a new user account so on your computer yeah you don't have to follow along at home I just think it makes it easier to learn with that physical component where you're you're doing it yourself but you will need to go now create a new user we're gonna call this user Jennifer give them a password and I'm gonna log off and I'm gonna log in as Jennifer so we'll log in as Jennifer maybe take it a second here to bring the desktop up but what we're gonna do from Jennifer now we're gonna pretend that Scott has told Jennifer I've put these packages up on a network share would you go open them up and add your code to them or would you open them up and run them maybe Scott is a consultant Jennifer is the client and Scott has sent Jennifer some information okay a couple of SSIS packages here so we've got a Log in as Jennifer. We're going to launch the Visual Studio for the first time. It's going to take forever, so I'm going to let that run and then transition. 
Okay, so it took a while, but we are in. We're logged in as Jennifer. We can get rid of all the, the stuff here. And now we want to open a project, which is the same project we just copied to the C drive. So chapter three, and go ahead and open that. Now, was it not chapter three? No, it wasn't chapter three, was it? Oh, man. All right, I just realized my mistake. Let me... Um, I gotta switch over. Now, see, most instructors would hide all this from you because they would be embarrassed at their foolishness, but this happens in the real world, right? So, corruption was the actual one, not chapter three. It was called corruption, and so I had to go move it because Jennifer was not an admin and could not have accessed the administrator's documents. So now back in as Jennifer. Sorry about the, the mix up there. Hope I didn't lose anyone. Uh, now I'll go open up that particular project. And by the way, if I seem like I'm going fast in the Visual Studio here, uh, remember we've spent uh, now two and a half chapters basically in the Visual Studio. So if you're not watching this course uh, in sequence, then it won't that may seem like I'm doing things faster to you than it would be to someone who's watched all the previous videos. Okay, so we have our packages over here. Now you can see. Let's go, let's just go try to run each one of them. Let's just right click. Let's don't even open them and try to execute these because this is going to be the environment that you often will see as a newbie. You've gotten a package, you try to execute it, and you get an error message just like we get right here. Well, you'll go down to the Output tab right here, okay? Oops, and I didn't mean to uh, disassociate that here. Um, oh, I didn't want it there either. Just right there is fine. Uh, but it, you can, uh, when it starts, no. When the debugger, which is what we're in, starts up, it puts the autos, the auto watch window, and the call stack here. Um, you want to go to Output when you want to diagnose error messages and you can drag this and make this in a different location you see I can put it in all kinds of different places uh, so I can actually put it just like this give myself a little bit of a bigger window uh, you can also go under your tools and options and change the sizes of the fonts but here's our error message here um, login failed for user SA. Okay. And it's remember we are in the don't save sensitive. So the actual password was not saved inside. Okay, so we didn't get an error message, but we have to deal with the idea of troubleshooting a connection problem. So to fix this problem, we would have to go to the connection manager, local.master, then we would have to enter the SA password. Next, we could run this right now. Okay. And uh, oh, we got to save it. And uh, I need to go really F4 properties and move you out of the way. And change my protection level settings to encrypting the sensitive data in some manner. So I'll choose now a password. And I now hit save. And oh, I don't have the ability because I didn't save it. The the ACLs on this actual package file before. Uh, I don't have admin rights. I don't have the ability to oversave the administrator's document here, so I can't do that. Um, but this is how you would actually troubleshoot it. You would go enter the password. Then you would go to the package properties and tell it you want to encrypt the sensitive with a password uh, or the user key, but we'll talk about why in the next one this is a bad, probably a bad idea. And then you would be able to work this one. Coming back over here. Let's do the encrypt sensitive with user key. Let's try to execute this package. Package corrupted. Okay. All right. Cool. Now we get our error list down here. We get the output. Um, key not valid. 
for specified state. Okay. So what we're seeing here, we told it to encrypt the password using the user key. And if you remember from the previous videos, that means that it uses the administrator name and some other information as the salt for the encryption mechanism. We're not logged in as the administrator, therefore when it uses our username and tries to decrypt that information, it fails. So what we would have to do now, coming back over here, we would come back to the execute SQL, or rather to our connection manager. We would have to enter the password just like we did with the previous one. And we're just waiting on it to come back. Let's, there we go. So I would enter my password, make sure that it tests successfully, and then I would save the password. But again, I'm not going to be able to because I'm logged in as Jennifer who doesn't have the privileges to do that. But that's how you would solve this. You'd probably want to change it over to encrypting sensitive with a password at that point. So that would solve your problem. But that's that package corruption error. Now the final one here, the encrypt sensitive with password, if we try to execute this package, now we have to have the password. So we can still open the package without the password, but we won't be able to execute it and have it use that password. So I put the password in. Look at that. Uh, we can't see it because I've moved the output, but we get green. Okay. So in this case, our output is success because the encrypted, the sensitive information was able to be decrypted successfully. No package corruption errors, no errors during a connection. So you will find, let's just sum this whole thing up, you will find that you get the most compatibility, the most portability with packages in which you encrypt the sensitive information with a password instead of a user key. Just far easier, I think, to manage.